Uh, my name is James O'Keefe. I'm a cardiologist in Kansas City at the Mid-America Heart Institute, uh, St. Luke's Hospital. Uh, I am a clinical cardiologist, professor of medicine at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and director of our preventive cardiology program here. I'm here today to discuss our article, The Potential Adverse Cardiovascular Effects from Excessive Endurance Exercise. This will be in the June issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. This is an interesting, in my opinion, and con somewhat controversial, but very important publication that for the first time outlines in detail not only the hypothesis that excessive extreme endurance exercise can cause cardiovascular damage, but also gets into the uh, various ways in which this might occur, the pathophysiology, the um, clinical manifestations, and also some areas that need f further um, exploration. Uh, we want people to understand that this in no way detracts from the importance of exercise. Physically active people are much healthier than their sedentary counterparts. So much so that they on average live seven years longer than someone who doesn't exercise at all. So don't mistake what we're talking about. This is, uh, exercise is among the very most important things you need to do on a daily basis. But what this paper points out is that a lot of people take um, misunderstand that if moderate exercise is good, then the more is better. When in fact, both from a fitness standpoint and from an amount of exercise and even the intensity of exercise, most of the, the lion's, shore, lion's share of the benefits of exercise accrue at relatively modest levels. In other words, getting out for a 20 or 30 minute walk per day is a really great exercise, even though it's not all that uh, intense. And if you're running, and we think running is healthy, but uh, the data would indicate that running distances um, in, the, in the ranges of two or three or four miles is plenty. And that running probably ought not to be done more than four or five times per week, and ideally probably more like two or three times per week. And on the other days, you do things like cross training, weightlifting, stretching, yoga, walking, swimming. But what we're concerned about is people doing extreme endurance exercise, like ultra marathons, marathons, 200-mile uh, bike rides, the Tour de France. I mean, granted, these are a small minority of people, but I guess what we're trying to clear up is that this is not really conducive to great long-term cardiovascular health. You're better off backing off, doing about an hour of uh, intense aerobic exercise, and you probably don't need to average much more than 30 to 60 minutes. Beyond that, it's a point of diminishing returns. Most cardiologists and most general practitioners ought to be aware of this data. When I get a lot of athletes that come to me and they, they tell me that they're training for a marathon, I say, I don't recommend it. It's not good orthopedically. It's definitely not good for your heart in the long run. If you want to do it, train up for it cross it off your bucket list. This is not a, a, a healthy long-term exercise pattern that is going out and running three, four, five hours at a time. It's just too much, um, too much exercise. And you can train up to do it, but uh, again, I think that um, not only for, uh, 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 from the standpoint of fewer musculoskeletal injuries, but also from a healthier cardiovascular standpoint, excessive uh, aerobic exercise, excessive extreme endurance exercise in veteran athletes. Uh, you can get away with it when you're 15 or 20 or 25 or 30 or maybe even 40. When you get into the second half of your 40s and definitely in the 50s and beyond, really long intense exercise can cause fibrosis and scarring in the atria and right ventricle and can predispose to things like atrial fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, um, diastolic dysfunction, and even accelerated atherosclerosis. On this information, I would suggest that doctors don't back off at all from uh, recommending exercise, but a lot of people fall off of exercise because they feel like if they, don't, if they don't go to the gym for an hour and a half, or if they don't go out for a three mile or a five mile or 10 mile run, it's not, any, it's not doing them any good. When in fact, the opposite is true. Getting out for a 20 or 30 minute walk with your dog, or going for a 15 minute walk 
during your uh, coffee breaks, going for a walk with um, a significant other, taking the stairs, um, jogging rather than, than you know, hardcore running. These are healthy exercise patterns that do bestow um, a lot of cardiovascular benefits and, and you, don't, it, it, you don't need to, and in fact it's actually counterproductive to be doing extreme endurance athletic events. And not to say that you can't do a few, but just don't make a career out of doing this over the decades. It's, it's definitely not good for your heart, not good for your blood vessels. Although exercise is very important, and I think that, say, committing 30 to 60 minutes a day uh, to aerobic exercise is a really, really great idea, among the very most important things you can do. Beyond an hour a day, I think you'd be better off investing your time in things like strength training uh, twice a week or three times a week, um, yoga as often as you want. And I should point out too that if you really like to walk, and some people who are uh, obese or overweight and trying to keep weight off, sometimes they need to exercise 60 or 90 minutes a day. And, but it's generally not intense exercise. This, this is like walking or, or light uh, um, bicycle riding. And these findings do not apply to, to, to that situation. You can do light to moderate exercise as long as you want. We're, we're genetically designed for that kind of activity. We're just not designed to run 26 miles at a time, let alone 100, or go on a full distance triathlon for 12 hours as hard as you can go the whole time. Troponins go up, BNP goes up, um, in the long run, it causes scarring and reduces um, not only cardiovascular health, but might even shorten longevity. There was a study that one of the co-authors, Dr. Carl Levy from the Oshner Clinic, co-authored with the folks down, uh, um, down at Cooper Clinic. It's a large database of 50,000 people, of whom 10,000 were runners. And as we'd expect, the runners actually look to have better long-term longevity, overall life expectancy, compared to the non-runners. But among the runners, those who ran at moderate intensities, moderate distances, and even moderate speeds did better with respect to long-term survival than those who ran longer distances, more, uh, than, than, uh, three, more than four times per week, and even faster than about seven and a half to eight miles an hour. So. Um, when it comes to running, uh, it, it helps to, you know, be a little less intense about it. And, and it's actually more enjoyable, in my opinion, anyway, to do it that way and, and, and not hammer it. We also pointed out that a high-intensity interval training, as it turns out, is, is very good for building fitness and doesn't seem to take a toll on the system as much as, say, two hours of continuous um, strenuous exercise. When I'm sitting here... Uh, uh, at rest, my cardiac output is about five liters a minute. If I go out and go as hard as I can, that goes up fivefold. That's a lot of volume. That's a lot of work. And we're, we're designed to do that for periods of time, shorter intermittent periods of time, but not long, real long distances and long protracted, uninterrupted um, strenuous exercise. So, but high intensity interval training is a great way to develop improved fitness. Uh, and maintain improved fitness without um, putting in so much uh, long duration um, workouts. So the essence of this uh, report is that while exercise is among the healthiest things you can do, more is not necessarily better after about an hour a day of intense uh, aerobic uh, endurance exercise. So that a lot of the benefits seem to accrue at 20, 30, up to 45 minutes. Beyond an hour, not only do you not seem to accumulate more um, benefits, but you may even start to diminish some of the benefits of exercise. So if you look at sedentary people compared to regular exercisers, the exercisers will live on average seven years longer. But in the group of exercisers, those who are doing the extreme forms, marathons, ultra marathons, 200-mile um, bike races, uh, the extreme endurance athletic events, uh, when you do it for years and decades, appears to cause um, cardiovascular damage in some individuals. Some people seem spared, but um, uh, the longer the distances, the longer they've been doing it, 
um, the more likely they are to get uh, the scattered fibrosis, particularly in the right and left atria and the right ventricle, that causes stiffening and can be proarrhythmic. So it predisposes to atrial fibrillation. Veteran endurance athletic uh, uh, participants, uh, somebody who's been doing marathons for 25 years, these people have an incidence of atrial fibrillation that's about five times higher than an age and gender matched population. So these, um, so our take home message is that extreme endurance exercise is not necessary, number one, potentially harmful. Uh, and we kind of go through the pathophysiology of it. When you look at marathon finishes or, or uh, long distance triathlons, the kind that, that involve a marathon at the end and a 112 mile bike ride and 2.4 mile swim all in one day, this is a 12 to 15, 18 hour endeavor. Uh, and, and this can frequently, you have elevated troponins and BNP and other biomarkers of excess inflammation and cardiovascular damage. And while the right ventricular dysfunction is temporary and the, and the spike in the biomarkers are temporary, these come back to normal in one to two weeks. In fact, with time, we see on um, uh, various uh, imaging studies uh, and animal studies also show that you get this diffuse scarring uh, particularly in the RV and the atria that can predispose to arrhythmias. And there's even some data suggesting accelerated atherosclerosis in these veteran extreme endurance athletes. So um, we feel like the take home message is exercise is really beneficial for you. Uh, among the most important things you can do every day, 30 to 60 minutes is ideal. Um, walking is, is great, running um, or uh, swimming, uh, cross training we think is healthiest and um, avoiding uh, a, chronic pattern, a chronic pattern of, of extreme endurance uh, uh, athletic endeavors.